Hello and welcome to Math 125 Calculus 1. Uh, this video is going to cover introduction to calculus and um, some pre-calculus review. Um, so in, calculus is, a, is the study of change. Uh, that is a study of change when the elapsed time is extremely small, that we, we call it infinitesimal. And um, in then what we are trying to get into this um, course is to be able to calculate the behavior of mathematical models. Uh, and so we will introduce you to some mathematical models. We give you word problems uh, to work out the calculus of the uh, models. And, and then you will see that even though these are simple models, a more complicated model can uh, basically break, break down into the simple models that we introduced. Um, a lot of them, not, not obviously all of them. Uh, so some of them you have to um, start with completely different models of mathematics. Um, so the first chapter, uh, the first chapter that we cover in this course is chapter two, uh, it's limits and uh, continuity. Um, in how does limit and continuity work with this uh, uh, course is, is first of all, uh, explaining this infinitesimal comes with limits and in the infinitesimal changes are uh, what we discuss with limits and then um, it also helps with uh, finding the behavior of models in some places uh, limit concept of limits and continuity comes back uh, in follow-up chapters chapter three four and five every time we discuss um, a new concept we have to go back to the limits and uh, continuity. Uh, so one uh, function that is familiar to you uh, is um, y equal to x squared minus 1 over x minus 1. Uh, and this one or, or this type of function is familiar to you. This is the type of function that you see when you discuss the continuity or domain of a, an elementary function. Um, this function everywhere in its domain works as uh, y equal to x, uh, x plus 1, uh, except that is not defined at x equal to 1. Uh, basically, continuity for uh, elementary functions is that domain, the function uh, is continuous with the elementary functions are continuous in their domains. Um, but then um, it, easily enough there can be a hole in the, um, in, in the function and that hole uh, causes a discontinuity. Uh, in, in this case basically a lot of limits exist but the function has a hole so discontinuity happens. Um, the next concept that, that comes uh, uh, basically on its own, uh, we discuss limits again as the uh, behavior of a uh, function on asymptotes is defined, um, a closest asymptote def is defined as um, a limit. Basically, all the concepts that we learn about asymptotes becomes a limit, and that that again tells us more about behavior of a function as as uh, the end behavior of the function, or uh, if there's a vertical asymptote, how does it um, how does a function behave, getting closer and closer to that asymptote, basically. Um, all of that said, there are um, other types of uh, uh, functions that we discuss um, for limits and continuity. Uh, one of them can be uh, this type of function. If it, you see that uh, y equal to x sine of 1 over x, uh, domain does not include 0. So if I want to define this um, over the entire real numbers, uh, we have to make it into a piecewise defined function. Um, and it's it's interesting because there is so much 
um, oscillation happening right there and 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 but then you you kind of see the trend of function going toward uh, sort of this point that is not there uh, as it did over here. So what else we cover? Chapter three, uh, that's the rate of change. Uh, when you when you what we remember from pre-calculus is the um, uh, the slope of the secant line is the average rate of change of the function at these two points. So if you have two points, the slope of their second line gives you the average rate of change. So here's the second line. Now I want to know whatever it is and the rate of change at a point a and f of a. Um, so the rate of change at a of a and f of a, it's supposed to be something that comes um, basically as the behavior of the secant line around a and f of a. And so what happens is that if you uh, look at all these secant line, at some point when b gets closer and closer to a, um, the secant line becomes a tangent line. That means that it locally touches the function, uh, the graph of the function only in one point. And um, that basically, um, uh, it, again, defined by the concept of the limit, it gives us instantaneous rate of change. And that's the discussion of chapter three and some more over that. And then we drive a lot of formulas for this instantaneous rate of change. The next uh, chapter, chapter four, uh, it, it talks about uh, the shape of graphs of the function. And now that we know, we know a lot about shape of graph of a function and, and um, how uh, it explains the models uh, in pre-calculus. But now um, calculus gives us a lot more um, tools to discuss the uh, function uh, using the graphs of the function so it gives you enough information for the graphs of function and so something that is covered in in chapter four is these local maximum local minimum and so on and so forth and we also discuss uh, what is called absolute or um, global min and max of a function so this this is very useful for optimization so you have a mo you have uh, a situation and you model model it with mathematics and then uh, you sometimes want to have the optimized situation you either want to spend fewer uh, less money or you want to get more out of uh, whatever money you have and and so you want to optimize the uh, outcome of the events and so this uh, this chapter we model a few of those um, the next is chapter five and um, in, in chapter five discusses the uh, area under the curve uh, and so area under the curve because what the area that we're very familiar with is the area of a rectangle or the, their shapes that we are very familiar with on how to find the area of them. And, and we use this concept of infinitesimal change again, and we basically uh, tile under the curve uh, using um, rectangular shape to find the area under the curve. And that, again, in chapter five, ends up with the fundamental theorem of calculus. So what we learned in chapter three was a concept called derivative. Now in chapter, chapter five, uh, we learn uh, something called integral. And then uh, this accumulative um, function that, that we learn in there uh, is related to this integral. So fundamental theorem of calculus uh, gives you a, a function uh, basically that is 
anti what we did in chapter three. And so that, that is another part that is of interest to us, basically. Um, so these are all the, uh, uh, basically, uh, some of the concepts that are interesting in each chapter and or uh, explains what each chapter is going to be about. Uh, now, let's uh, talk about pre-calculus. Um, what we remember from pre-calculus, there was a function as a black box. Uh, there's an input going in and an output going out. Uh, usually x comes in and y goes out. So it's y equal to f of x, basically. Uh, there's a vertical line test for functions. For example, this first one, the, the oval over here, is, is not a graph of a function. Um, but over here, this parabola is a graph of a function because any vertical line only uh, intersects a parabola in one place. Um, so there are some graphs of well-known functions. This one is the constant function. Then we have the identity, that's y equal to x. And then um, the graph of the function f of x equal to absolute value of x. See, it looks like uh, the identity that is broken and one piece um, basically mirrored over x-axis. Um, and then um, the graph of a, a function f of x equal to x squared, that's the parabola and looking upward. And so inverse of that uh, has to be restricted because this is not a one-to-one um, -one function and the inverse is absolute value of x, but the domain of the inverse uh, is uh, basically restricted. Um, and then uh, other functions, f of x equal to x to the x cube, and that and there's the, the inverse of that one is the third root of x. This one is not um, basically um, restricted because you can also uh, take the third root of uh, negative numbers. Um, even roots are always over the positive numbers the um, in for real numbers and um, the odd roots can accept the negative numbers also so it's both positive and negative for uh, for these by the way your calculators usually there are uh, many calculators that don't have the tools to take the third root of negative numbers you just have to remember uh, to plug in the absolute value of the number and um, basically negative of the third root of the absolute value of the number for when x is negative is going to give you the answer. Um, then we have um, these type of functions that are uh, quotient functions f of x equal to 1 over x if we go uh, for f of x equal to 1 over x squared and um, then the shape basically a part of it becomes a mirror image. Equation of a line, so when we're talking about equation of the line, uh, we're talking about point P1 x with x1 and y1 as coordinates and P2 as x2 and y2 as coordinates. And then the slope of the function is the rise over run. That's the difference in y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Oh, by the way, you can switch the two and uh, um, for the slope, if you write y1 minus y2, then you have to write x1 minus x2 in the bottom, basically. Um, and so then b is when, in let's say, the uh, equation of the line, the slope intercept of this is going to be y equal to mx plus b, where b is the um, um, basically y intercept of the uh, line and um, it's called this is called slope intercept form uh, there are other forms but then basically you can always simplify to slope intercept form um, 
And the other thing to notice is that graph of a linear function is a line. Um, now let's talk about trig in exponential and logarithmic graphs. Um, it, one, the, we start with the cosine and sine. Uh, the cosine function is, this is illustrated in one period. That means that uh, it just goes on and on like, like the same wave. Um, basically, it repeats this um, entire thing. If you notice, cosine is 1, uh, cosine of x is a, a 1 at x equal to 0, and then it's um, 0 at um, pi over half, and then it becomes negative 1 at pi. Um, and over here also, things to notice. Um, y equal to sine of x is, um, again, another wave, and it repeats it. This is, again, uh, illustrated in for period 2 pi, um, basically for a period of the, um, starting from negative pi to pi, um, and then it repeats its cycle as it goes either side as the cosine of x. Um, so basically the same shape goes on and on. Um, then let's talk about tangent of x. Tangent of x is one of those functions, again, very much of our interest because it's, um, again, comes back in uh, chapter two a lot. Uh, we, we have to remember how these uh, basically graphs look like. The vertical asymptotes and horizontal asymptotes are important to us. When cosine and sine do not have any um, asymptotes at all, they would just, um, they were periodic and they would repeat themselves over and over and over again. Um, tangent of x is periodic, um, but it with an asymptote, a vertical, with uh, infinitely many vertical asymptotes. So for example, at pi half, where does the asymptote appear when the denominator is uh, is going to be zero. So if I um, tangent, tangent of x is equal to sine of x over cosine of x, and that's a simplified form, and cosine of x equal to zero gives you pi half, it gives you negative pi half, and so on and, and so forth. And by the way, the period of tangent of the x uh, is, is going to be just pi, is, um, is pi because it just repeats after every pi. Uh, now, the inverse of tangent of x is arctangent of x. Arctangent of x is one of those um, the, one of those inverses that uh, actually is restricted domain. Um, see, it's just the inverse of the main branch of the tangent of x, and uh, the other ones are not included because um, tangent of x is not one to one. We have to choose a main branch. And that's the main branch that we choose. Now, compare these two. Tangent of x has vertical asymptotes, and our tangent of x has horizontal asymptote. And that's what you expect from um, inverse functions. Um, tangent of x has infinitely many asymptotes, but because our tan of x is restricted, um, is inverse of the restricted tangent only has two horizontal asymptotes. Um, and then other functions, um, here's an exponential, y equal to e to the x, as, um, as the exponent over here goes uh, to toward the negative infinity, uh, there is a, a horizontal asymptote, y equal to 0 for e to the x. And so you're expecting for the inverse, to have a vertical asymptote because e to the x has the horizontal asymptote, uh, y equal to uh, natural log of x, and basically has a vertical asymptote at x equal to zero. Now, 